What a joy it is to be with you here today during these times of change. Did anybody notice? Nah, it's, it's normal, right? It's normal. This last month, we've been focusing on how we can navigate through all of this change, through all of the, uh, the, the concerns, the crisis, the change, the challenges, the circumstances that come up, all of those things that are bubbling up in our lives. And we've been navigating through that. And this month, what's come to me is, is having, going beyond that activity of doing and navigating and rather get into the sense of being. So what do we need to be? How can we be in this time during these circumstances that will come and go because they're temporary, yes? Three of you agree. The rest of you, you're in the right place. They're all temporary. All of these circumstances are temporary as we move through these challenges in life. And the, the, the whole question is, how do we live through them? What must we be? And today we're going to focus on being present. Now, raise your hand if you've ever won something in your life. Almost everybody. Yeah, I remember when I was in, uh, I was in, this would have been in Anaheim down in Southern California. I think I was in third grade when during October they'd have those, they'd ha we, we would have, um, a, a whole celebration at school. They would set up all of, you remember those ping pong ball tosses and you'd win stuff? I won a goldfish. <laughs> you laugh at my goldfish. I don't understand. This was a prized possession in third grade. This was like, yes, I got my goldfish. I tried for three more and my mom's like, oh, thank goodness. I only won one. But this is how I felt. Have you ever felt that way? It's funny because somebody sent me this photo after the service last Sunday. I guess they had taken a picture of it while they were watching online. And I'm like, whoa, I remember feeling that way last week. I remember feeling that way when I won that goldfish. I remember feeling that exuberance, that excitement, that being present, that being available in that moment. It's like, I want to be that way all the time. Anybody want to be that way all the time? Well, let me tell you, it gets a little tiring. You know, because it's a lot of energy being spent there. That's what I discovered. But what I also discovered is there are times in these challenges when I'm not feeling that way. And I'm wishing that I could feel that way. How many times do we find ourselves struggling in life? You know, we find ourselves thinking about a story of something that happened in the past, right? Some situation, some circumstance that happened in the past, and all of a sudden we realize that we're just ruminating on it, we're reliving it, we're telling the story in our minds. It's like 3D. How many times have we sat there and, and thought about the future and said, oh my gosh, you know, how the heck am I going to get through this? When am I going to get my third shot? When am I going to be done with masks? When am I going to get back to normal? When is my life going to be different? Have you ever experienced that? At some point in your life, we've had this, this idea that we're, you know, we're, we're so tied up in the past and we're so tied up in the future, but it's all unconscious, right? It's all, they just, things pop up, and all of a sudden, we're, we're struggling with the past. We're like reliving the past, and we know from science that that's what, exactly what happens. When we go into that story mode, we're actually reliving whatever the trauma was. We're reliving the challenges. We're bringing it back up for us. And, and in our body, physically, and in our mind, it's just as if we were there at that moment. And then when we're worried about the future, what's going to happen to our future, right? Am our, are my kids going to be able to go to school? Are they going to be okay playing? Ethan going to be okay playing football? Is Megan going to be okay dancing? You know, what's going to happen in, in, with my job in the future? Am I going to stay home? Am I going to go back? Do I have a job? What's going to happen in my retirement, right? I've been stuck up, stuck in this house all this time. What's, when am I going to be able to get out and travel and feel comfortable with it? All of those concerns, all of those energies, that's us bringing to mind all of that trauma and drama in the present moment. It's like I'm living the experience of the past and projecting it onto the future. And then when I move into the future, it's like, well, we can't do that. No. Life's too hard. Can't do that. COVID. Right? So we're conditioning ourselves for the future. So 
the idea is to live in the present moment. And we know that. We've heard that. Anybody not heard that? Okay, we've all heard that. We have to live in the present moment. What does that really mean? I love this quote from Mother Teresa where she says, Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not come. We only have today. Let us begin. Let us begin. The challenges aren't that we're living so much in the past. The challenge is that we're doing it unconsciously. There's some benefit to looking at the past, right? Have you ever heard the phrase, you know, if we don't remember the past or know the past, we're doomed to to repeat it? So there's some benefit to knowing the past. There's some benefit about looking at the future. There's some benefit if we're actually going to go take that take that trip to Hawaii. What do we want to do? Let's get the kids to figure out what they want to do. That makes it easier on the adults. What are we going to do for that project? How are we going to, you know, start planning for what's to come, whether I'm going to come back to work or not? How are we going to handle our employees? How are we going to handle and manage our boss? That's the bigger challenge. And all of those things can be beneficial if we do it from a state of conscious understanding that we're living in the present moment. Conscious understanding that we're here right now and we're leveraging the past and leveraging the future to create our present moment. So here's an example. There are many times when we do a meditation when we, um, we do what's called a heart coherence. If you're familiar with heart math, you'll know that it's the idea of breathing into our heart space and bringing to mind and generating a feeling of appreciation for life, a feeling of gratitude for life. And sometimes what we do is we resource the past. We look back to, to past experiences that brought us great joy. In fact, we did it last week. We looked back to see, well, when have we experienced that sense of I'm available? and brought that to mind. That's called resourcing our past. And we're do- when we're doing that consciously, it can be very beneficial. And when we find ourselves wrapped up in the story of the past, when we all of a sudden discover, oh my gosh, I'm, just, I'm creating that drama all over again, right in my mind. It's that awakening when you say, oh, I'm in the past, that brings you back to the present moment. And so now you can use whatever you were thinking about to create something different. When we're looking at the future and what we're planning on doing, we can remember what a great time we had the last time we went on that trip. What a great, wonderful experience that we had as a family and what it's like to come together as a family. So what, would that, what, that, what might that look like as we go forward in the future? And as we're looking at it from that perspective in this present moment, we are, uh, we are being present while planning or resourcing, and we're bringing all of that consciously into our present experience. Consciously. So what happens when you discover that you're having that experience in the past? Well, not only are we experiencing change and conflict and circumstances in the outer and in in our inner mind, but it's also the opportunity for us to change our thinking about it. Now, that's the challenge, because ego does not like change. Ask your ego, do you like change? Do you like it when, you know, I, I switch from, uh, I don't know, strawberry ice cream to chocolate ice cream, or vice versa? Or if you don't eat ice cream, non-dairy desserts? Right, there are things in life that, that, we, get, that we struggle with. The ego does not like change. Uh, Father Richard Rohr, in his book, The Naked Now, he wrote, Did anyone ever tell you that Jesus' first message in the Gospels, which is usually translated as convert, repent, or reform, is actually from the Greek, Greek word metania. Meton- oh, gosh, I blew that one. I don't speak Greek very well. Metanoa, metanoa, the Greek word metanoa, which literally means change your mind. Change your mind. Jesus' very first lesson to us was to change your thinking, 
To realize that as you change your thinking, the world will open up to you. As you change your thinking about the world and what's happening, you will experience a greater sense of health, wholeness, and abundance. Change your thinking. So when you discover that you're ruminating about the past, you know, I can't believe he or she said that to me today. I can't believe that last week, you know, they're still holding that against me. I can't believe, you know, what that person said in the news today. I can't believe what's going on here. When you find yourself all of a sudden, you know, circles swimming in that, that past, where the past is now driving you, that first awakening is like, oh, here I am. So one question could be, what can I learn that I haven't learned yet from this experience? I've been practicing with these through the week, and I've tried different things, so I want you to be very specific about what words you're using and then identify what's working for you what's not, right? Because I started with, well, what, haven't I, what do I need to learn from this? As if I've never learned anything yet. Instead, it's what more can I learn? I've learned a ton. It's coming back, so what else can I learn from it? How can I look at this a little differently? And the beauty of asking the question is that it automatically changes you from this victim mode to this curious mode. All of a sudden, you become curious. What else is in it? What else can I use here? What's useful to me? If you're thinking about the future, you might come up with questions. I wrote a few down here. You might come up with questions like, how do I want to be during this experience of the future? If there's something out there that I'm dreading, right, some interaction, some experience, something out there that I'm not looking forward to, well, how, how, what do I want to be? How do I want to be in that experience? It calls back to that idea of values. What spiritual values do I want to express that we talked about last month? How will it show up? And then picture yourself expressing it and showing up as love, showing up as faith, showing up as confidence, showing up as authentic. Really picture yourself and resource that skill so that you're projecting into the future that idea, that energy that you are here as a present being. You are the being bringer of peace. You are confident. You are present to spirit. And you're expressing it. Can you see how that might be a little more useful? Just simply by asking that question. And that shifts our consciousness. I realized, gosh, when I was in it, even in the present moment, let's see if there's a present moment circumstance. And... Um, I was getting frustrated. It's like, okay. I started with ideas like, well, what good can I find out of this? So good was not the right word for me because good set a level has an expectation, right? It's going to be happy. It's going to be joyful. It's going to be ooey gooey. It's going to be nice. Oh, yeah. That wasn't possible in my consciousness at the time. So good was off the list. How can I... Uh, get the best out of this situation. Oh, no, that didn't work too, because best, you know, again, led to, oh, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm worthy. I'm, I'm rich and wealthy. I'm whatever the situation is. So then what it became for me is how can I get the most out of this situation? And for me, that worked. One, it was the question. It shifted me out of the complaint it shifted me literally. I could feel the energy. And when I'm frustrated and you're know, just getting like, ah, oh. it's like, well, what can, I, what can I get out of it? What can I get out of this? What's the most I can get out of this? And all of a sudden, I shifted from that frustration immediately to curiosity, which led me into a thinking of, of pulling out those resources. What spiritual practice? What spiritual quality? What spiritual value? How do I want to be in this situation right now? What can I manage to get into? And even just that shift to curiosity lifted me up so that I can be present. You must be present in order to forgive. You must be present in order to feel that surge of spirit through you. You must be present in order to receive the gift of knowledge, to receive the gift of inspiration, to receive the gift of here's your next step. But you must be in the present moment. If you are 
concerned or wrapped up in the past, you'll miss it. All of those things that we've been praying for and looking for and wanting to draw to us in our lives have come and gone because we were just not present. When you become present, you begin to see the nuance in the world. When you become present, you begin to feel the breeze on your face as you're standing in your backyard. Become present so you can see the changing of the colors on the leaves just right outside this room. Check it out when you leave. When you become present, you can be with someone and really be with them and understand them and not be clouded by your unforgiveness, not be clouded by the past, not be clouded by your concerns about who's going to do the dishes tonight. Be present in this present moment. And as you are, the way opens up. The way it shines upon you. It's like that candle, right? It just comes to life. And all of a sudden, you see it. And now you're, you have the capacity to reach for it, to move in that direction. You know, there are times, there's one more question that I want to get out there. When I'm so wrapped up in the past, I'm so wrapped up in the story, and I do this sometimes when I wake up with dreams that are just like, wacko. You know, and I'll do this with an idea. I'll say, okay, I'm done with this. And I set it aside. I'm just done with it. I'm finished. I just decide I'm finished with it. And then I move on. It's different from saying, you know, I never want to see this again. I never want to feel this again. We crumple it up and then we stick it in our back pocket. And then we go to lunch and, you know, we're like, what is in my back pocket? Right? That we carry with that throughout our day, and then our hips get out of joint, and our back start, starts aching, all because we're saving, we're holding on to those stories. We're not saying, I'm finished. When we say, I don't ever want to see this again, we're, we're resisting it. And what happens when we resist something? It persists. Right in my back pocket. Over and over again. I'm, I'm just, I'm finished. I'm done. Can you sense a different sense of energy there? I don't want to feel this again versus, oh, I'm done with this. That's it. It's a brushing away of the cobwebs. I'm done with it. The idea pops up again. Oh, no, I'm still done with it. There it is. I'm just letting it go. I'm setting it aside. I'm putting it in the finished pile so that I don't have to pick it up again. As we let go of the, our hold on the stories that are playing about our past and our future, we come back to the present moment. And in this present moment is where we live and have our being. In this present moment is the only real thing that is. So let's be present to what is. I want to end with a poem from my mom's book, Color This Day Beautiful, which will be available in the bookstore at some point whenever our bookstore is open. We're thinking October 31st, maybe, Mary? Oh my gosh, I already said it. She gave us two thumbs up, so it's a go. Each day, a change. What can I bring to this day that is good and true? What can I give of myself? What can I give to you? I will bring to this day an open heart, acceptance and thanksgiving, and give to myself some time apart for peace-filled inner living. I will bring to this day an open mind and a willingness to see that what I have to give to you is a warm and loving me. It's only when we live from that present moment can we give that love. It's only when we live from that present moment, from this present moment, can we experience that inner peace. Can we express that infinite love Can we be at one? Our affirmation for today, pardon me, as I get my clicker, our affirmation today is on the screen. I'm going to read it once and then invite you to affirm it with me. I am joyfully present to the infinite flow of life, love, and wisdom in my life. Would you affirm that with me together? I am joyfully present to the infinite flow of life, love, and wisdom 
in my life. And now our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Love and blessings, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Namaste. Everything.